Hey, what's up everybody? This is Patrick from WP Builder Helper and today we have a very special video. People have been asking about it, they've been requesting it, they've been wanting it. So I finally had to get off my butt and actually record it. This is going to be part of the very first one in a whole entire series of videos that I'm going to end up doing. People want to see comparison videos versus page builders. They're finally at a place where I think that you can start comparing them and start seeing the differences between them. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the reviews first and then I'm going to work my way into comparison videos. Specifically, one page, bil page builder versus another page builder. What the differences are, what I think are better, maybe some things that I can point out in the communities, those type of things. So I don't expect these page builders to take and come out and be happy about this because most of what I have to say is critical and people don't like being criticized. But I think that many of them, if they can take it with a grain of salt, I think that they can improve because I've seen people improving off of the things that I've been saying. I'm not critical to be critical, I'm critical to try and improve the product because I want to see everybody win. I'd like to see more competition in the market. It drives innovation. That's how it works. So with that, let's get started. All right, guys, welcome back to our initial page builder review the first one that we're starting with is Brizzy and Brizzy is a pretty popular page builder it kind of started out with a bang it had this really neat image feature which we'll go over later but it's just got a very clean UI and UX interface it's cleaner than almost any other page builder that I know of I mean it's one of the cleanest when it comes down to it and I, I just really really love the interface that Brizzy's got. I feel like it's not intrusive as some of the other page builders that are on the market. I mean, besides your, I would say, Elementor. Elementor definitely coming in second to this, but it just feels very, very light. It's a very, very light page builder, and that's just the best way to put it. So right now we're on a Brizzy page. I'm going to kind of walk you through. This is not a tutorial nor a demo. So if you want something, you want to learn something about it, whether it be pop-ups or something that I do here that you see and you say, hey, I want to know how you did what you did, then please comment, say something down below, and I would be happy to make a tutorial for you. But for now, I just want to kind of go over the details of what this page builder is and kind of talk through it and give you some ideas of some of the problems that it has but also some of the good things that it does really really well and so I'm gonna walk you through very basic page I'm gonna like start with just the generic page like why don't we start here this is probably the best place to start one of the things I really really enjoy uh, when Brizzy first came out it did not have this organization with the way that the blocks line up, they did a really, really good job with this. I love the way you have your saved blocks and your global blocks and just all of this. Every page builder has a global block and saved blocks, but the way Brizzy like uses this is very, very reminiscent of um, Divi, I want to say, because Divi's kind of got this same thing where you have these different websites that you can kind of pull from if you're a pro member and you can go here you've got business travel what I really like about Divi's block I mean Brizzy uh, Brizzy's blocks though is that the categories here are great so rather than trying to take and find something that you want like um, getting lost such as you'll see with other page builders they make this really really easy and not only do they make this easy but they also have a light and dark mode so if you're just trying to put something together, this stuff automatically switches from light to dark. That is 100% unique. There is no page builder on the market currently that does that. And I really, really enjoy the fact that, you know, you have these different kits. I would like to see them merge to just see them all. I'd like there to be an all button, but I still think it's really cool that you have this light and dark function where they'll literally turn the background light or dark I it's just really really original it's it's a small touch on something but it's a touch on something that makes such a huge difference 
because it does the work for you without you having to do it. And there can't be enough said with that. If you're someone who is taking and maybe you're new at web design and you're using these blocks as your beginning layouts, which is perfectly fine. This is great for wireframing and doing things like that just to show a customer the basics of what they might see as they're working with you and everything that you're doing. But I mean, you can see they've got tons and tons of uh, hero images, features. I mean, obviously footers and headers are a bit small, but I expect that this will expand. But it's got like every block imaginable, and I really, I'm really interested to see what they end up coming out with with a block kit three in the future. But I really, really love this. I think that this is a good starting point. It feels really solid for me. Uh, most of the blocks are done very, very well. They're, they've got some great um, images that they use for them. So we're loading one here. And it just great typography, great images. I love the way they do everything. It just looks really great from the standpoint that if you were going to use this, then it would be a perfect starting point for someone to start building on this and then use something else. But you know that's just one part of it so Brizzy works a little bit diff uh, differently than some of the other ones in most cases the other builders they do have a solid library and they do have things that they do just like Brizzy does but Brizzy's UI as you notice when you click on something it just goes straight to it it has this little pop-up here which I really really love to adjust text and things like that. I think my only complaint about this has been that there's some text options that you don't end up seeing. So yes, you have size, yes, you have weight, yes, you have line height, yes, you have letter spacing, but I don't believe you have things like all caps or sub caps or anything like that. I'm sure that'll be coming in the future, but you don't have it yet, which is a little bit sad because if you want to do all caps or sub caps or anything like that, then you're going to have to take and do it manually, which is a bit of a pain. It's easier to just have a button. But as you can see, you can load new fonts here. You can upload fonts from Google or upload your own fonts. Um, they even have the fonts right here that you can kind of go through and select and trash, which is very, very cool. I like their font system too. I think their font system is really unique. You've also got some um, some alignment. You've got obviously color, and from here you have shadow and mask. So that's really cool. You can actually do a mask here. I think with an image. So let's grab an image. Let's take something like this, that's really colorful, and let's see. See that's huh, that's really really awesome. That's the kind of stuff that I like seeing. This is innovation right here. You don't have a mask function on any other page builder that's out there right now. With the exception, you could quote, you could say that you could put it in a lot of them because they use classes and things like that, but that would require you to type code. Brizzy has that built into it, which is just, it's just really great to see that type of innovation. And then not only that, you can move the mask. So if you don't like the color of it, or maybe it's too dark, this is the image portion that I think really, really put Brizzy on the map. In the beginning, this was the thing that made Brizzy just stand out more than anything else. You can take the image and you can literally adjust it exactly where you want it. And it works with all things. It works with the background. It works with everything. So you just move this little blue dot and you'll notice that, well, obviously with the background, it's set to full width. But if for some reason you want less of her neck, more of her hair, or you want more of the body, you can move that. That is a really unique thing that Brizzy has. And I really, really think that it's one of the things that put them on the map that to make them say, wow, this is a different company. This is a company that's looking at the whole picture, not just part of the picture and trying to recreate the same wheel over and over again. So, I mean, this is just basically some, some basics. We're going to dive deeper into it and kind of look at some of the other things. But I just wanted to talk about this really, uh, really for the start to go over some of the details of just the things that they do that are really, really unique. And this being one of them, I think that this is really cool. You can see right here, if you're changing something, it immediately pops up under anything that you change. You have a little, you have a little, um, 
a little menu that pops up. And that's how easy it is with Brizzy. I mean, everything pops up as you're using it, which I think is just awesome. You don't have to click through menus or anything. It's literally set for you so that if you click on something, boom, you've got access to it right then and there. All right, so we're back. Now that we kind of talked about the fact that, you know, it has, that Brizzy has all these great features, I wanted to talk about some of the other parts of Brizzy that I think are really cool, but they, they kind of work similar to some other builders that are out there. Brizzy has a styling option, which as you can see here is a styling where you can select any sort of style for a website and basically it's supposed to take the style, the font, the colors and everything, which is pretty cool. I mean, I think it's neat building that, building that in because then that gives you the ability to kind of test different styles with different people. You don't really see it on here that much, but when I go, let's let's actually delete this out of here. Let's delete this. Let's grab a page. Let's grab a layout and let's just test this. Like this is a perfect example. Let's let's import this layout. So we're going to grab this layout. It's waiting for it to load. Okay, so there it is. It's grabbed the layout. And as you can see, it's already grabbed the styling that we put in, which is the Ashen styling. I think this is super powerful because from a designer perspective, you'll realize very quickly that most, most people who start building websites will run into things like this. Now, Oxygen has something that's similar, but to be quite honest with you, it doesn't work exactly the same as this, which I think is pretty cool. That's that. It, it's neat. They let you set up like a style sheet that you can technically click everything over with, but the difference with this is that you actually just go in and you can select the style and completely change everything around, and apparently Brizzy's got this set up where it goes color one, color two, color three, and it goes in and it adds these colors. Now, is it always going to work that way? No, it's not going to look great on every single website, but I think it's pretty cool that you can just go in and kind of select colors, select fonts, and all of a sudden you've got a full website that's already designed where it's gone in and it's selected these items for you and done it and made it easier where it looks more put together. I think that's the whole point. You want it to look put together. You don't want it to look like it was um, created from using certain blocks. They've also got the ability to take and reorder blocks. Now, once again, Oxygen already has this. Not sure if any of the other builders have it, so I don't know where that falls in. I don't think, as a matter of fact, I'm lying. Elementor does have it. Elementor's got it. Oxygen's got it. Brizzy's got it. I think even Divi's got it to some extent, although it's not as pretty as this. This is definitely the prettier way to do things. And actually, if you wanted to, what's really cool is if typically you had a menu, and let's say you were going to make this a button, you can actually go in and you can link this to a section if you wanted to, which I think is, is really cool. I think it's something that, um, that Brizzy's doing. Brizzy's got some things that are going for it that are working well, but you've got your list of elements here, and it works similar to Elementor in the sense that you just yank these elements and if you just want another text element you take and you go in and you put this text element and boom you've got some text here it looks terrible because it's gray if we select white you'll be able to see it and look you've got some text and all of their elements work exactly like that I like all of the elements I don't find any are complaining but at the end of this we're going to talk about something that's really important for right now, if you're doing anything with dynamic elements, like I said, we'll talk about this a little bit later, Brizzy uses this, pa this pound hashtag thing, and it'll allow you to bring up some dynamic elements into your post, which if you had post title or anything like that on a page, it would allow you to bring this up. This is actually one of the problems we're going to address later, but we're not going to talk about it right now. This is more of an overview. We went into the introduction just a little while ago. This is more or less how things work. Brizzy, as you will find like many of the other designers, have tablet mode and mobile mode, which I think is great. It's got the ability to set featured image. You can set a page template, just like most of the standard builders, so that's, that's really cool. And it's got some other shortcuts, such as plug-in settings, shortcuts about Brizzy, and submit a bug. 
You've also got the ability to hide things, whether on mobile or not, which is once again really cool. And so if you were to select something like go here and select the mobile view and say I wanted to hide this about us, you can click this little eye icon and that is not going to be in um, mobile view anymore. And if you click tablet, you'll notice it's still there. If you click desktop, it's not there. All of the builders have this. You, it, once again, doesn't work as pretty as Brizzy's. I think Brizzy has the UI, which I think is just really, really nice. But it works, and that's the most important part of it. it that's what people are looking for. So um, this is just, like I said, a basic overview showing you how things work. So now we'll move on to the next portion. All right, guys, before we give final impressions, we're going to talk about um, uh, pricing and we want to talk about the bad because I need to talk about the bad stuff that's going on in Brizzy. So like I had mentioned earlier, one of the things that bothers me is there's so many good things about this page builder. It drives me nuts that you have a hashtag in order to create dynamic content. I know other people have mentioned this in Brizzy about this not working. Um, besides the little minor nagging things from the typography, that's not really that big of a deal. But the fact that dynamic content's got this hashtag that you use, I mean, I'm well aware that Brizzy is probably waiting for something along the lines of um, the, the dynamic content that was coming with pop-ups and things like that. Now we've got pop-ups, and pop-ups have the ability to take and do whatever you want. So if you add a button, let's take this button. Let me see if I can remember how to do it. You should be given the ability to take and do a pop-up with it. Um, and yes, it's in the link. It's right here. And I think you can do it with almost anything. But the pop-ups have been given the ability to have conditions. So if we grab a pop-up, this is part of the problem that I find. Pop-ups now have conditions. What I think is it's great, the fact that this pop-up works and that you have these conditions. But what sucks about this is that you don't have conditions with everything. And so when you're setting things, it's cool. Look, you can align it. You can do all this. That's great. That's awesome. And they've even got the conditions. Scroll behind. Make it global. Close. It's got close buttons. It's got all of that. And I think that that's really cool that they've done that. But it doesn't change the fact that you need these conditions in order to make it user friendly and I think that that's what's part of the problem here I think that this is an afterthought and I think people are well aware of it as a matter of fact you even have it with the WooCommerce elements if I'm not mistaken it's, it's a lot of the same stuff it's an afterthought and Brizzy is working really hard to bring out version 2 of everything but the problem is, is that this isn't a complete model. You run into the same thing with headers and footers. So if we take and we go into headers and footers, you're going to let, let me go back to the dashboard. I'm going to go back to the dashboard and I am going to create a header and footer for Brizzy. And I'm going to show you one of the problems of something that it, it's been going on and people say it's not a problem. And I'm sorry, there's no nice way to say this. It is a problem. So I'll delete this. I'll trash this. This was probably a header that I was using before. Let's create a new header. Let's call it header in here. Let's call it header. Well, did I accidentally hit it? That's my fault. So it won't be named anything until I go back. But let's do it anyway. Let's create a header. So we're going to add in a header. And we're just going to grab any header that's in here to show you. So I'll grab this one. I like this one. It has a menu. Let's go in here and select the menu just so we can say we have it. Um, where is the menu button? Sorry. Once again, my fault for not knowing right here. Select the menu, main navigation. There we go. So we've got a basic thing. So we're going to publish this. And we're going to go back and we're going to add in... Um, we're going to go back, we're going to go back to the dashboard and we're going to add in, okay, so it just named it that, we'll rename it header just for, just to update it. Cool, header's been done, so now we're going to go back and we're going to add another one and we're going to call this one footer 
And right now it's included to all posts. I should have set it to all pages too. We'll go back and add that to make header work. So right now header and footer are only going to work with posts and pages, but I'll go back and change that so I can show you the problem that you run into. So we're going to select a footer, select a generic footer here. It's perfect. I like it. Publish. Update. Done. Okay. Back to the dashboard. Okay. So now what you have is if you have a page, let's take a post page and we'll take a new page. I'll show you the issue. We'll call this demo page. We'll publish it. Publish immediately. We're going to go back and edit it with Brizzy. Okay, so when we go back and edit this, you're going to notice I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, well, you didn't, but it's okay. I was going to say you're going to notice that the header and footer should be there. I'm going to grab any page layout, so let me grab this, this, and I'm going to import this layout just so we have a layout that we can use. It doesn't have to be perfect. So this is going to import this layout. Perfect. So, yep, perfect. So it's going to be ugly because it's not going to match up with anything, but that's okay. This is meant to be a demo. So we're going to go back that, yeah, cool, it just updated. I was worried it was going to click in too fast trying to get through this. So now we're going to go and we're going to preview this page. And I'm thinking you're probably going to see a problem as soon as we go to the page, but let's see what one of the problems are. And if this doesn't load, then this is my fault, which, once again, I blame on me. Don't blame on Brizzy. Yep, it didn't load. So, apparently, this didn't load because it didn't save, which is, once again, my fault, most likely. We'll go to the page and we'll resave it if it didn't save. Yep, it looks like it, looks like it did not save. And let me see. Okay, we'll update it again. Now we'll exit out of it. We'll go back to the dashboard. Once again, try this one more time. Demo should be updated. And we'll preview it. Let's see if this works. So, nope, it is not showing up for some reason. So, let's go to post. Let's go see why demo isn't showing up. Let's go to view. Okay, so it shows up here. So, one of the things you'll notice is there's no header and footer on here. Are you noticing this? So this, this page is finally up and running. I got it up and running. Sorry that I'm so inept that I couldn't get it up and running. But you'll notice that this page has no header and footer. And this is a page developed with Brizzy. Now, we could go back to the options. So let's go back to the options and see what I did wrong. I want, I'm doing this on purpose to take you through some of the things. So what did I do wrong here? Let's go to edit. And let's see, so I've included it with all posts, it's included. So let's go add. So all posts is included. Let's go with all pages. Let's click it. Now let's update it. Now the header should show up in all posts and all pages. So we're gonna go back to our post. So once again, could be a me issue. But now you notice that it's still not showing the headers and footers. And part of the problem with this is, is that Brizzy's running off of a little issue. And it's called conditions. Well, as you might assume, the conditions aren't built into headers and footers yet. As a matter of fact, they haven't even come out in headers and footers. Now, there are ways around this that you can take and you can add in global elements to take in for that to happen. So let's go look at a page. Let's see. 
does a page load let's try this let's try this view with Brizzy I mean this Brizzy page and see if it loads a header also because we just changed the settings and you're already starting to see flaws in the system so look once again headers not loading and I know the footer's not going to load because I didn't tell it to load, but this is an example of a problem. Brizzy can't have stuff like this happening. The team behind Brizzy, I don't think that they understand that people want certain things done. They want WooCommerce installed. They want uh, dynamic image, dynamic data installed, and they want header and footer installed. If you are a website designer and you cannot have headers and footers installed, then what are you doing? I mean, how are you going to make this work? And the community has been complaining about this. There's been some complaints about Brizzy Cloud, although this is not stuff that you can really look at. But when you take and you look at some of the conversations that are happening on the Facebook page, you'll notice really quickly that a bunch of people are basically saying that if it doesn't catch up to like where Elementor and some of the other people are, then they're going to have a big problem in a year from now. Now, I'm very much aware that Demi, which is the, I, I guess, the CEO of the company, that they've been working on it. And then he's basically told everybody, hey, guys, look, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Version 2 is coming. But part of the problem of what the whole entire thing that Brizzy has to understand is we need this stuff now. If we're going to build websites with it, you need to be able to take and do dynamic data, WooCommerce and headers and footers. I don't need pop-ups. I don't need forms. That's great that you have all of those things, but I need headers and footers first. You're following the typical tradition that Divi did, where Divi said over a year and a half ago that they were going to have headers and footers where you could do you could use the Divi builder to do it, and then it took them a year and a half to create it. I understand that this is not an easy method. This not an easy process for the Brizzy team. And I, I'm not trying to trash them. That is not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to take and tell them that there needs to be a way. You don't put a roof on a house before you have a foundation. And I feel like there's things that Brizzy team keep coming out with. They keep coming out with version two of the forms. Now they're coming out with version two of something else and version two of something else. You don't have your house in order. You don't even have the header and footer, which is one of the most essential things for Brizzy. I know people are going to trash me. They're going to say, look, you can do this and you can do this and there's this hack and this hack. It doesn't matter. It needs to work. It works in Oxygen. It works in Divi. It works in Elementor. These are the kind of things that as a community we're looking for from the Brizzy team. And I really, really hope that the Brizzy team is going to get on this and they're going to fix this kind of stuff. But this is an example of something that the Brizzy team is just overlooking. And I don't think that they understand how important it is. People who want WooCommerce, people who want headers and footers, those are not minor requests. And I understand that, but you have to have them in order to build a website. And so when somebody is saying, hey, Brizzy team, I need this, they're not saying it because it's like, okay, I'm just saying it for my health. They're saying it because they literally want them to fix it. They want them to have this working because it should be working now. I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't be working. So for me, it's, it's a problem with the fact that if you look in the community and you take and you go through some of these, there's, there's a little bit of, um, I would say it's patience that's needed. But it's also the fact that people are tired of waiting. They put, they sunk a year ago some money into this, and some of them have sucked money recently. And to find out that you can't even do headers and footers is just a, it's terrible. I mean, it's bad from a builder because you are a page builder. That should be dynamic content and headers and footers should be on the forefront of what you need to get done. And if you don't have it done, then you need to go to the people and you need to let them know when it is going to be done. Because people are waiting on this so that they can take and they can tell their customers when they can start building stuff with this. So this is kind of a rant. I know it went on a little bit way too long than it should, but I wanted to give you the background for why this is happening and what's going on. And I know other people on the forum, on the Facebook group, have said things like this. They're aggravated with it. 
they want something done. These type of things need to be included. So I'm going to move on to the last bit and we'll, I'll see you then. All right, so we're back, guys. So the last thing we're going to talk about, since we've talked about both the good and the bad, you've seen a little bit of everything that's going on, is the pricing for Brizzy. And I think that the pricing is one of the main things that kind of, it brings Brizzy to a level that's, for me, that's acceptable in terms of how it works and what they're using it for. So right now, if you were to buy Brizzy by itself, Brizzy offers uh, 49 a year for three sites. It offers 99 a year for unlimited sites, and it offers 2.99 for once, and it's the ultimate use. And this is a limited time offer. So these two are going to constantly be there. Oh, and it also includes a year of cloud access, which if you don't know, that's Brizzy Cloud, and it's like an add-on feature. We'll talk about that at the end, but. Um, that's an add-on thing. So if you're comparing this to say one of the bigger, um, let's look at one of the bigger uh, page builders. It, let's look at Elementor. Elementor, this is a place that Elementor to me has really struggled. And it's a place where Brizzy is picking up customers. And you know, Elementor for one site, you're charged $49. For $99, you get three sites, and for $200, you get a 1,000 sites. Well, Brizzy just skipped that noise and said, no, nope, we're not going to do that. We got a $49, a $99, and a $299, which is a limited time offer, but it's a lifetime offer. I think this is really smart. I like the fact that, that more companies are offering a lifetime offer. I wouldn't be shocked if this went up to maybe three four hundred dollars and it, it you know it goes up because it's a limited time offer for the early adopters some of us who bought brizzy in the very beginning even got it for a lower price than that but i think that their pricing their pricing is one of the things that's really saving them to me honestly if if i'm going to compare elementor to brizzy i mean this pricing scheme is just much much better and i'm a website designer or, you know, I'm going to use Brizzy to design my websites. It's much, much easier for me to swallow $99 for unlimited sites with all of this included than it is for me to swallow three sites for $99. Now, let's be honest. If you're charging for this, you're most likely going to want to make a profit off of that. So the, the closer you can get to an unlimited the more money you're going to make because the more sites you do, the more money you make. So I understand why everyone wants a lifetime offer, although that's not always the smartest thing. However, when you look at Divi, Divi has always offered a lifetime offer. As a matter of fact, Divi's pricing hardly ever goes down, and yet they take and they've always had a pricing that is standard among everything else. And that just goes to show you, oops, am I going to the wrong thing? Let's go to Elegant Themes. So that just kind of goes to show you that you can, I mean, these companies, they're fighting right now in pricing. And I think that this pricing, you just can't get away from the fact that lifetime pricing right now, see, Divi even only has two. It's got $89, but it's unlimited. And this one's $249 one time, and it's, it's unlimited. So when you're comparing it to, you know, Elementor, which is one of the bigger builders, and then Divi's definitely the, the second one under Elementor, it may even be first. I mean, no one really knows because they're not in the WordPress repository, so you can't track the number of total installs. I wish Ele uh, Divi would kind of give you that information, but it doesn't give you that. But the thing about this is that Brizzy is being very competitive with their pricing. And this pricing structure just works really, really well for them. As a matter of fact, when I complained earlier about some of the things that we're running into currently, I feel as though those things are minor compared to this price. Especially for someone who is getting the lifetime deal um, currently, I think that that's the price you pay. People kind of want to rush things, but at the same time, you got to weigh the options of the 
the price and everything like that. We know that all of these features are coming. They're coming with version point two of Brizzy and they will be out eventually. So it's a waiting game. The problem is, is if you're a web designer today, right now, it's hard not to choose one of these two giants or even uh, something along the lines of Oxygen, which also has a $99 um, fee that you can choose to have it. It's it's hard to it's it's hard to go with this because not everything is done in it. So yes, while it's cheap right now, I need everything to be done. You can start charging me and making money off of it, but I need things to be done, and things are not done with this builder. So I think that that's it, it's a hard pill for anyone to swallow because if I pay ninety nine dollars for something today. I want to be able to use it today. And yes, you can use it today. There have been plenty and plenty of people who have built Brizzy sites. So I'm not saying that you can't use it. What I'm saying is you don't get the full experience. And I'm going to talk more of that in the end when I'm going over my conclusion. And I think it's something that we need to look at. But from a pricing perspective, I give Brizzy the thumbs up. I think they're being very competitive with their pricing. I enjoy this pricing scheme. I think it's fair. I like three sites and then unlimited. As a matter of fact, if Brizzy Team wanted to, to make this a more enticing offer, I would maybe jump that up. Maybe, maybe give it four sites. Maybe give it five sites. What's the difference? Why can't people have five sites? Like three sites for real? Give us, you know, give us five sites. I think that that's even a decent price for that. You, you make it competitive like that and you end up beating them because they're giving you one site for 49 and three sites for 99. Brizzy's got much, much more competitive pricing. So I think Brizzy wins in that, in that regard. So let's move on to my final conclusion. All right, so let's try this once again. Recording number two, the first recording I lost the audio. So we'll try again. What do I think of Brizzy? And everything that we've talked about. We've talked about the good. We've talked about the bad. We've talked about the things that I really enjoy about the builder. And so now we're going to kind of talk about the future and where we're going with Brizzy and everything like that. The first thing to understand is that one of the things that I really like about Brizzy is that they include their cloud feature with their WordPress add-on. I think that that's really, really smart because it adds value to the builder. And it's also one of the reasons why I have the recommendation that I do. Because otherwise, without it, I'm not sure that it would be as easy to recommend as it is. So here's where I stand on the builder, here's where I go. I know most of you wanna know, what do you think about the builder? First things first, let me address things that the Brizzy team needs to fix, which if you haven't watched the video, then you know what you need to fix. But I feel like you guys have built the slab, you've got the foundation, you're starting to take and build the house, and yet you're adding doors and windows with no walls built in. And I think that that's where we are. I think that not having the header and footer with uh, conditions, not having dynamic content for the, you know, just regular stuff like posts and things like that, and WooCommerce, not having that fully fleshed out, those are the three things that are really going to set you apart and really get Brizzy to a point where it's like the plain, the the competition is more level because everybody has these features. As builders keep coming out with these type of features, full theme builders and things like that, it becomes the average. And what happens is the builders that don't have it just fall behind and then you're like, well, wait a second. Why don't I have the ability to take and do headers and footers? Why can't I take and I go in and edit WooCommerce? You know, those type of things make a difference to people. And so today, my recommendation is going to be a little bit different than it would be in the future. So Brizzy to me is a long-term thing. You have to see it to the end of its, the end of its road. You got to give it time to get to that point where it's going to develop and it's going to progress. But the problem with that is some of us already spent money on it. So the people who are spending money to do a project, if you ask me today, hey, I've got a WooCommerce project, do you recommend using Brizzy? I would say no, because it's not there yet. Hey, I've got a project and it's got a lot of dynamic content. content. Do you recommend I use Brizzy? 
No, I don't. The sites that we've seen from the community have been static sites. Very few of them have dynamic content. Some of them have blog posts. Some of them have things like that, but they don't have a majority. You're not seeing somebody build a real estate site with Brizzy. You're not seeing someone build a, uh, you know, something that requires a lot of, of uh, inner weavings to get to work. You're just not seeing that. And that's my biggest drawback with Brizzy. I think that you just got to look at the whole picture. Today, would I say, would I recommend that you buy Brizzy if you were developing just standard sites? Sure. Because I think the cloud feature is good. I think that the the billing's good. That the, the uh, price that they charge for their stuff is good. I will say one thing about this, Brizzy. I think you need to keep the lifetime pricing at least until you get to the point where headers and footers, WooCommerce, and dynamic content is fully done. The rest of it, it matters, but it doesn't matter as much as those things. Those things matter. Those are the core of what websites are built for. So you need to have that. That's what people are looking for. Um, the rest of it, it matters. Don't get me wrong. It's not that it doesn't matter, but when you look at the forms and you see what people are complaining about, let's be honest, they're not complaining about, oh, the WooCommerce is so great. It's not there yet. They're saying, hey, this doesn't work. Couldn't get my headers to work. Couldn't get this. And look, I'm far from an expert. JP has a channel that's that used to you know have Brizzy content. And I think now it's Brizzy own, but his channel does a lot more explaining. He's way better at it than I am. But point being, if you're somebody who's taken and you've you you're trying to build a site with it, you're going to run into frustrations with Brizzy because there's a lot of things that are broken, incomplete, or just plain not there. And so that's what Brizzy needs to do. They're developing kits and form version 2 and this version 2, pop-up version 2, but yet you don't have a header and footer. You're putting the cart before the horse. And if you don't realize that, you need to realize it now. You may not agree with me. You may say, hey, there's a reason why we're doing what we're doing and there's pieces that fall apart. That's fine. You need to explain that to the community because you're not doing a very good job of explaining why you're doing what you're doing. It looks um, very uh, broken and fractured right now with the way it's coming out. It's coming out like, oh, we got to do this because people are bitching about it. Oh, we got to do this because people are bitching about it. Oh, we got to fix this because people are bitching about it. Why don't we have WooCommerce? Why don't we have the header and footer? Those type of things are the things that we're ultimately going to look for. So, like I said, I'm not trying to make this super long. Would I recommend you buy Brizzy today? Sure. Based upon the value that they're giving, they're giving you a year of cloud, which I think is awesome. They're giving you a page builder, and it's even got a lifetime license. I totally think it's worth it while that exists. Once that lifetime license is gone, it's going to change up the pricing a little bit more. It's going to be... We're going to have to see where they fall in that general scheme of things. Because if they don't create something that's mind-blowing, then you fall into the same problem with every other builder, which is every other builder's got WooCommerce, every other builder's got header and footers, every other builder's got this, every other builder's got that. The things that separate Brizzy from, say, an Elementor are about this much. There's, there's that many features that are in Brizzy that separate it from Elementor. And I would even go as far as saying there's that many features in Elementor that separate it from Brizzy. All of these builders have little micro things that separate each other from it. So when you're looking at the whole playing field as a whole, you have to say, well, how many of them have certain things of this and this and this? And just look at it as a whole and go from there. And I think that that's what Brizzy needs to do. So for me, it's a yes, but it's a long-term investment. Don't buy it today with the thought that you are going to go out there tomorrow and build a WooCommerce site. Because if you are, it is going to be very static. Now, to those of you who are going to say you're an idiot, you don't know how to use it, I get it. 
I haven't had a lot of experience building Brizzy websites. That is 100% true. But that's also because when I played with it, I found things that are broken in it. So I am by far not the most expert on the subject matter. I hope to become better with it over time as I start playing with it and going through it and seeing what's going on. But it doesn't change the fact that you can look at the community, you can read the comments, and you can see people are getting to that point where they have their frustration levels of being a little bit fed up that they invested a year ago money into this builder and we still don't have headers and footers with conditions or WooCommerce for that matter. So those type of things are the things that you have to look at the whole picture of. And I think that you have to be aware of it. And Brizzy's done a great job. They're updating. Can't wait to see the updates. Very happy with that. I think it's just up to you. It's up to you to make that decision. But based upon my recommendations today, like I said, the cloud function, super useful. Not super useful right now because they're still developing it. Brizzy is a developing product. Give it time and hopefully by the end of this year, if it hasn't caught up by then, then I think we're in a little bit of trouble. But for right now, give it some time. Give it a couple months. Let them develop it more. Let them come out with more new features and more this and more that. Make sure they work out all the bugs that are with it. You just got to give it time. And that's one of the things that I'm, you know, trying to tell everybody. So I hope you like this. I'm going to have more tutorials with this. I'm actually going to have page builders compared head to head where we pit them against each other. And so I'm going to have all of that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do me a favor. If you like this video or you have any comments or there's something I messed up, I am not perfect please go ahead and comment down below. And if you really like the video, hit that like button. It helps me know what you guys like and what you guys don't like. And I am going to see you guys next time.